Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white high toughness deck featuring Huatli and Assault Formation to let our creatures deal damage equal to their toughness rather than their power. And Assault Formation can also potentially pump our team giving it one extra toughness which translates into extra damage. Huatli can also be used to gain life. Then we get to the high toughness creatures starting at zero mana with Ornithopter which gives us access to some very explosive starts especially when combined with Tower Defense which can give our team a 5 toughness boost, which translates into a lot of extra damage with Huatli or Assault Formation, so having the evasive flyer to get in damage early is quite valuable. Then at 1 mana we've got Grazer, only 3 toughness but does ramp us to potentially set up some more explosive starts. We've got Yoked Ox and the new Broker's Initiate at 4 toughness. Initiate can also maybe be pumped if our opponent manages to deal with one of our enablers. And then at 2 mana we've got the 6 toughness Giant Ox and the 5 toughness Nyx Fleece Ram, which can also gain a bit of life back. And then besides our tower defense as an extra finisher, we also have two copies of Ages of the Heavens, giving a seven additional toughness to one creature. So probably not as good as tower defense under most circumstances, but it rounds out our deck nicely. Now we could also consider playing blue in this deck, which gives us access to some more one mana high toughness creatures like the O5 Turtle, which essentially has the same stats as Nyx Fleece Ram if you don't care about the life gain. But the upside of sticking to two colors, of course, is a more consistent mana base. And our deck already needs to mulligan quite a bit to make sure we have one of our enablers in our opening hand, otherwise the deck doesn't really do anything. And then we also need to make sure we have enough creatures, not too many pump spells. So it's not the most consistent deck in that regard, but can lead to some very fun games. And then we also get to play with Gigantha, the Wellspring, as our companion, since we meet its requirements. So just a freebie, and I only realized halfway throughout the games that we could play it. And then a mana base includes some of our channel lands, and then plenty of basics and our temple garden to enable some petal grove and then the green-white pathway as well, but you could easily mess with the mana base a little bit more, maybe include some creature lands if you fancy them, although for the most part we're not going to get enough mana to activate them. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and our hand is a little bit heavy on the assault formations here with three of the effects and only one creature. So, probably not quite what we need here. Okay, this is much better. No one mana play, but um, double Ornithopter can start beating down. Do you want to keep Aegis or a Giant Ox is a question? I think we keep the Giant Ox and uh, bottomed Aegis. And then we can play double Ornithopter. So next turn we can hit for 4. Could also play Giant Ox first, honestly. Ooh, Tower Defense. Makes me more interested in maybe playing the formation now, hit for 4. And next turn we could hit for 14. So if our opponent shocks themselves, we could already kill them. Although Fading Hope can maybe interfere here. Although also nice that we can play Ornithopter for free. And resolving this before a counterspell happens is also quite relevant. Aberration attacks. And yeah, we'll just attack. Hope the opponent bounces one of them. And it doesn't feel too bad when we can play it for free. And then maybe next turn we can set up a lethal defense. Ornithopter also blocking a Spectral Sailor is convenient. Another Delver. So we'll just take three. Attack with all. And see what happens. Shums the Ox, 
So I could go for tower defense if they have nothing. We kill them. Although they have a lot of cards in hand and presumably a counter spell, even a bound spell would disrupt us. So I think we just let damage happen and then play a grazer, which is pretty decent in its own right. And yeah, it's going to be an essence capture to counter it. As soon as we play Watley, we can gain a ton of life back. Opponent going to fight the good fight with Curious Obsession. Leaving Aberration back to block Ornithopter. And a Storm Tamer, one card in hand. Alright, now it's probably reasonable to go for a tower defense. I can maybe cast it before attacking, although then our opponent knows to chum block. Or we can attack first, but then if they counter tower defense, we lose an ornithopter in the process, which is not ideal. So maybe we're fine with tower defense, see if it resolves. Opponent double chumps, still takes 7 down to 3. Or we can just attack with an ox, play a ram. Yeah, that's maybe safer. As soon as we draw lands, we can also activate Assault Formation to pump our team. And yeah, Lofty Denial, so glad we played it this way. Can trade an Ornithopter for Sailor if we'd like. They can also activate to draw now, but probably don't have time for that. And a Storm Tamer. Alright, coast is clear. And uh, if I attack with all, they chump Ox. And essentially lose Aberration. Don't even have to tower defense. Just pumping with Assault Formation would be enough. So now I guess we're only dealing 7. So at that point I'm better off playing a Watley and gaining a ton of life. So we're at 18, and our opponent's drawing pretty much dead here. Yeah, Giant Ox put in a lot of work, but the early Ornithopter baiting out uh, Fading Hope also worked out nicely. Curious Obsession on Aberration. Opponent's gonna attack in the hopes of finding a blocker. which they didn't find, and their opponent explodes onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with an exciting hand. Turn 1 initiate plus Ornithopter, can maybe get our formation down right away. Put on the green-white so we don't need to fear any hand disruption. So we'll have to see here if we want to play a ram first or get formation going right away. Innkeeper, so if that's the case, if I formation, hit the opponent for 6, next turn I could make it 16 and maybe kill the opponents outright if they're not careful, so probably worth it here. Now they could have a Skyclave Apparition to maybe exile this, but it looks like an Angel Life Gain deck instead. Okay, so if opponent doesn't block, they're just dead, but they may not know it. And there we go, Tower Defense, 16 damage, and our opponent's dead. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has potential. Got our two high toughness creatures, can ramp out a Watley and a backup in case one maybe gets dealt with. So we can Boseju, Grazer, put in Grove. And then I'm probably gonna play the Ox before playing Watley. 
was hoping to draw another creature here. That way we can hit for 7 right away. Harvester can trade for a Grazer. Yeah, so be it. Opponent takes it instead. And do we want to minus? Yeah, I could see the advantage of maybe our opponents being distracted by Hotly attacking her instead of keeping Harvester on defense. And then we can maybe sneak in a kill with Aegis. Let's try it. Let me aid you. Second Harvester would be bad because then they can essentially kill my board. That's going to be a strangle. And then Harvester finishes off Watley, so now we need an untapped land to set up the kill. Alright, this still works. Back up Watley plus Initiates, hit for 7. And now we won't be activating Watley anymore. And we're also getting to the point where we can maybe activate Initiate, which gives us an alternate win condition in case they somehow deal with Watley here. It's gonna be a Bone Crusher on defense. And our opponent passes, so move to combat. I guess worst case our opponent has a Fatal Push. So if we go for the kill through Aegis, they could mess us up. Let's play Grazer, see if there's a response. That resolved pretty swiftly, so I don't think they're holding any instant. So I think we are pretty safe to go for the kill. And there we go, 11 to the face. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hands got the assault formation, so we're gonna keep. And then... Probably fine to go for a Grazer first, although might want to shock myself to have extra white mana available. Although, hmm, I guess never mind, Pathway would still come into play on the green side here, so just took two damage for no reason. Speaker, so a life gain deck, and we get to run out two creatures, nice. And then hopefully dodge a Skyclave Apparition, which is maybe one of their answers for formation. Opponent gets to gain one life for free. But not for long. Time for formation. And get a nice attack in for 13. Opponent jumps already. Alright, cross her fingers for no Skyclave. There's a green. And the next turn we can also pump with formation, so... If they had Apparition, we probably would have seen it by now. Just gonna be a Righteous Valkyrie. So tiny in comparison to our creatures. And uh, they probably didn't see this coming. But our opponent's dead regardless. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's quite promising. Double Ornithopter plus Initiate, setting up turn 2 formation. Attack for 8. And if our opponent's maybe a mid-range deck, taking away formation with the Thoughtseize, we have a backup. It's gonna be turn 1 Grazer instead. Putting in a Breeding Pool. And uh, yeah, we can play out our Initiates. Now that I think about it, we can probably play Gigantha ourselves if we wanted to. Can't think of any double-colored cards in our deck. Put on just an elemental deck. Okay, 
I'm gonna stick to the plan here, fine to take two, maybe keep I Ganjo for later. Although I guess they can block one Ornithopter with a Grazer. Now they're gonna jump my 4-4. Four four. Steamkin, another elemental, triggers a Risen Reef. And we'll take one. Okay, let's um, attack and then can maybe pump with formation. Most likely gonna just add a ram to the board. Ooh, Boseju blowing up our formation. Was not playing around that. Could have played Huatli to kind of still get our damage in. Okay, fair enough. Still get an extra land at least. Can make it a Temple Garden. And play a Ram, and then next turn play Huatli. At least our opponent's on empty. Might see them put Giganta in hand, never mind, Burgi. So maybe more of a combo deck than I thought. Soak up two damage. And uh, tower defense should be lethal here. We will write this story together. Bone takes it, and they're gonna take a lot of damage. And then we can still minus Huatli's second main to gain 10 life, but probably not necessary. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. No enablers means mulligan. This is better. And then we want to play white mana turn one, so don't need some petal grove up against a red deck. So Nyx Fleece Ram gonna do overtime. Although now we can Grazer as well if we'd like. Although Pathway is a little awkward with a Grazer now, as we'll put the green side in play first. So maybe we'll skip the Grazer actually. Play Initiates. So keeping some Petal Grove would have worked out better there. But of course we didn't know about Grazer. Can block. Feels nice. Another Grazer. Can't play both. So probably go for a Ram. And pass. Don't think I want to block Robber with a Ram in case they have a Stomp to finish it off. Burning Tree. Okay, put us down to two cards in hand at least, and an Annex. That one is quite scary. So now we're safe to block. Opponent actually finding a free Ornithopter. That's too bad. Gain some life back. And uh, yeah, time for Assault Formation. Plus Grazer. And do we want to attack? Probably have to pump the brakes here. And hope there's no Ember Cleave. Our opponent attacking with three creatures, exactly enough for Ember Cleave is quite suspicious. So Ember Cleave on Annex turns it into a, let's see, seven, eight, double strike, trample. So if I triple block Annex, then I guess we can take it out. They would kill Ram, Grazer in first strike damage and then initiates enough to finish off Annex. And it's not going to get any better, so I have to go for it now. Okay, Annex down. But so are all our creatures. But we can rebuild. We have the technology. Still have a Gigantha we can work with. 
backup annex, so no. Alright, it's probably gonna be too much for us to handle. Can activate assault formation, probably better than putting Gigantha in hand. But yeah, taking another hit from Annex with Ember Cleave is asking too much of our deck. Yeah, had a promising start as well. But Ember Cleave plus Annex is definitely one way to go over the top of our defenders. So activate formation. We have... how much toughness? Can I double block Annex again and get away with it? Yeah, I guess we would kill Annex. Still take a ton of damage in the process and lose all our creatures as well. But yeah, I think we're still probably dead to trample damage. And yeah, there we go, minus one. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is quite promising. Grazer putting in a land, and then uh, got our assault formation, so just got to dodge the thought seize pretty much. And I wouldn't mind an extra land. Perfect. Now against red-white, I guess I'm not too afraid of this getting removed, so maybe it's fine to develop our board first, and then have three creatures attacking next turn. So maybe a feather deck, never mind, smoldering egg. So not sure what this is, but we're just gonna smash into it. They can block Razor if they'd like. Still take 9, opponent's gonna take it, maybe afraid of a pump spell. Well, if they have an answer to Assault Formation, we're in trouble, if not, they seem pretty dead. And most sweepers here, maybe dealing 3 damage to each creature, is not an answer to this board, as we see a Fire Prophecy on the Grazer. One of the advantages of High Toughness. And yeah, opponent's dead on board, so we can even activate Formation. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. No enablers means mulligan. This is better. So we can get rid of a land, or we can get rid of Huatli. But if they have like a Thought Seize, I might want to back up. So I'll get rid of a Grove. Cannot quite play Ox turn 1, sadly. But we can play an Ornithopter. Might still play Ox before playing formation, since otherwise we're just hitting for two, which is not that impressive. Aha, uh -huh, Waste Knot, a discard deck. Okay, well, we have the land to play both formation and Watley. So unless they have two targeted discard spells, we should be fine. Inscription making us discard two. So, kind of interesting here. I probably don't want to give the mana to play another discard spell afterwards. So let's just discard Huatli and Aegis, since I'm unlikely to be able to use Aegis before they make me discard it anyway. And then we'll have the third land to maybe activate formation as well. Grazer's nice, another reason to hang on to a land in case we draw a creature. So now we're empty-handed, Waste Knot's not gonna do much anymore. And we're smashing for 6, next turn 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Could be a lethal if they don't have any interaction or blockers. Giant Storm's Ornithopter, that one's small enough to take out. And a Disciple, just a 1-1 Chumper. A Ram's not bad. Let's attack, probably see a Chump on the Ox. And yeah, red-black typically doesn't have interaction for enchantments, although there's a few exceptions, of course. Well, this is a pretty unique matchup to see in Explorer. The discard deck against the high toughness deck. Rankle's not bad, probably the reason why they didn't jump with Disciple. Although, 
that's still gonna leave them pretty dead on board. Can sacrifice Grazer. So they might have to sack Rankle itself. But then we can still pump with Formation to get to Ox to deal 5 damage. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and it's quite nice. Double Ox into Huatli, although I guess our Sun Petal Grove comes into play tapped. So we might have to take a slightly different approach. Opponent on a Mono Green Stompy deck. Temple Garden is the solution to our mana issues, so we can still play an Ox. And next turn start beating down. Tower defense also going to be important to kind of overpower the opponent or deal the last points of damage. No turn 2 play from them. Hit for 10. And yeah, as a mono green deck, there's not a whole lot they can do about this other than play large creatures themselves, which are probably still smaller than what we have. Maybe a collected company can stabilize them if they find two large creatures with it. But no, her opponent already throwing in the towel before even seeing our tower defense. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has most of the tools we need. Just missing a third land. And then we're off to a nice start. Well, let's see what we're up against. Uh-oh, Swamp. No Thoughtseize, please. Opponent obliges. Go for Ox instead of Ram. And then untap land over the top would be ideal. If not, we can keep building up our army of high toughness creatures. Black-white. Maybe an Angel's deck, who knows. I guess it could just be a Grease Fang reanimator deck. Are we going to see a Vanishing Verse on Giant Ox? At least Swatley dodges a Vanishing Verse. Yep. Alright, so it must be more of a control deck then. Opponent stuck on two as well. And yeah, we'll slam down Huatli and attack for 11. This power ought to be shared. Fatal push kills our Rame. Still taking 6, so next turn tower defense could be lethal. Uh huh, opponent was maybe missing a color. So, opponent thought seizing themselves, I see. Well, actually, a legit play if you want to discard a Parhelion to set up Grease Fang, but now this tower defense is certainly lethal and we can even see what the opponent's working with. It's an interesting kind of four color vehicle value deck. Alright, that was kind of an unexpected game in a lot of ways. But interesting to see Thoughtseize as a discard outlet. A neat trick that's sometimes used in older formats. So yeah, we got to see our green-white high toughness deck in action. And is it a meme or is it a real deck? I would probably not recommend it for ranked play, but it's a pretty good deck to do your dailies as games tend to be over very quickly. You get to cast a lot of spells of different colors, so it's probably more of a daily driver as opposed to a uh, ladder deck but overall still quite a lot of fun and very cheap to put together. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.